don't clap yet, you haven't heard anything, but uh, um, but Frank said I, I, I've been most of my life uh, a planner. And uh, why a planner actually? Because really I am a, a pragmatist. I'm also a great believer in democracy. Uh, and I think planning comes together with pragmatism and, uh, and democracy. Um, I really like collaboration. I, I, li I like compromise. I like working together. I like working in a team. I totally dislike conflict and I totally dislike the exploitation of power and uh, and so th these are these are things which sort of brought me to the planning profession uh, and I'll come back later to uh, um, to that I'll, I'll fill in it a bit uh, I'll fill in a bit later on um, what I want to do is just a it, it's 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 more of a sort of chat even though it's a one-way chat but I, I just like to sort of uh, I'm not going to give a big informal lots of data lots of information on, uh, on 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 certain things i'm just going to make a few reflections and uh, hopefully you'll find one or two things in those reflections which will you know um hit a string as we say in dutch um but uh, you know so it's 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 very much uh, uh, a bit of a chat and as as frank said I've sort of spent most of my, my career um, on very much the, the strategic planning part and very much on the, uh, on the international side of things. And the, and, and the Dutch were very much in the, in the, in the vanguard of uh, uh, the, one of the pioneers of international cross-border cooperation, quite simply because the functionality of planning uh, in such a small Delta country went beyond uh, the international borders and actually I first met Frank when he was working for the Benelux and uh, and so there was a cooperation between Belgium and uh, and, uh, and 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 Holland and, and, and Luxembourg um, so you know it was quite logical that I gave my few reflections on uh, on planning in an international uh, in an international uh, context a couple of things uh, to begin with first of all I think territory and land is absolutely fundamental to the to the human mind eh? it's uh, and the mindset we are a territorial animal whether we like it or not and so it remains incredibly important whether you like it or not and the second thing at the beginning is land is a is a finite resource obviously you're an island so nobody knows better than you that land is a finite resource um, and you know the Netherlands is also 500 square, uh, 500 people uh, a square kilometer. Curaçao about 350, and uh, but you know, I, I read somewhere a couple of weeks ago that uh, that around 2040 or 2050 or something, you know, some five percent of land will be actually built on. So when it's a finite resource, it's not that it's just, you know, we're, we're building land. But on the other hand. 10%, only 10% of land will actually not be impacted by uh, Homo sapiens. And we have to remember that all life shares, um, shares the planet, and if other species suffer, man will suffer as well. Uh, and so in that respect, I think planning is an absolutely essential profession. Um, we need to manage our <coughs> surroundings which is the best English word I think for omgeving we have to manage the spaces and the places and the flows uh, as part of that inevitable process towards uh, towards sustainability sustainability so I would say don't underestimate uh, the importance of what we call planning but having said what we call planning um, I come to my first challenge really because there are about a hundred different interpretations of what, what planning is. Um, it's vague, and especially if you're in that international work and international cooperation, you notice that you know, uh, the interpretation of what we have to do as planners is, is totally different. You, know, can you, you can imagine yourself, you know, um, you're at a party or something, you know, and you and you have a chat with somebody and they say, you know, oh, what do you do? Oh, I'm a, I'm a surgeon, you know, ah, 
okay, you're a surgeon, I really know what you do. You chop up people and make them better. Um, or I'm an architect, yeah, I design buildings, you know, and make sure they don't fall down and they look nice, you know. Oh, uh, I'm a planner, yeah, I make sure there's a good mutual adaptation of society and, and, and land. <laughs> hmm, what's that, you know? Um, hundred interpretations. And if I could have the next one, uh, Gautier, um, the, other, the other problem a bit is I call it the, the Salvation Army Syndrome. Um, why the Salvation Army Syndrome? Because <clears throat> the Salvation Army is a wonderful organization, you've probably heard of it, uh, but it does a lot of great social work. But it was founded in, in, the, in, in 1865 in London, where the army and the military was totally, uh, totally normal. And the poor old institution, which is really, really good, uh, and does wonderful work, but it's stuck with this name of being a Salvation Army with blood and fire and uh, having the swords and, uh, and painful, you know. And planning is a bit the same. Um, planning is, is stuck with a bit of an outdated uh, name and it, it's associated with bureaucracy. Um, of course, not, not the Curacao Department of Town Planning, but, uh, but I mean, it's, it's, it's got a reputation of bureaucracy, it's got a reputation of slowing down development. In Eastern Europe, it's got a big, big association with, with Soviet methods. Um, and in the 90s, in the Netherlands, for example, um, it, it, it really did suffer from this, uh, from this slowing down. And uh, we thought up a slogan, von hinder macht na und wickelkracht. And, uh, and uh, I won't bother to translate it, I think you, um, you've already heard it anyway. Uh, but it, it's, um, it helped. It really did give planning a stimulus because, hey, we're not slowing down development. We're trying to put it in the right direction. And we changed the word physical to the word spatial. And, uh, but we still have the challenge of the name. And... Um, and actually, we, I, I think we have to think about it. Do we, do we want to st still talk about planning? Um, I mean, I, I think there are basically two, two forms. One is at the strategic level and one is at the local level. But I mean, if we're looking at the, at the, at the strategic level, we're looking far more at, ter at, uh, at territorial development. Um, and at the local level, we're, you know, we're managing land, we're managing space. And, uh, and slowly but surely, we find in Europe that you know we're we're getting away from spatial planning. To be, to be absolutely honest, I, I, can, I can tell you a tell you a, uh, a secret that we thought up the term spatial planning in, in English in a in a little office in Brussels because we were trying to establish a more uh, spatial uh, dimension to to European planning. <laughs> And it was the wretched Brits again. It was, the, it was always the Brits. Um, but they were saying, ah, oh, we're not going to do town and country planning. Come on, that's a national, uh, national sovereignty. We can't have that. So we thought, uh-uh. Uh, what we want to do is something completely different. One of those hundred interpretations of planning, you know. So we thought, okay, what, what, what's, what's, uh, what's town and country planning in all the different languages of, uh, of the EU? And we saw that spatial was the, most, uh, was the term that sort of came up the most. So we thought, oh, okay, let's just call it spatial planning because it doesn't exist in English. I think it's, it's, it's got into the Oxford Dictionary now, so uh, there you go. Um, but, you know, it, it's... Um, it, it shows how international cooperation is really quite difficult because uh, everybody has their own interpretation, everybody has their, uh, their own name. And what we're trying to do in, in, in European context now is to sort of uh, to develop this, uh, a new name and, uh, and a new interpretation. And um, we'll, see if it, we'll see if it happens, you know, because we couldn't use territorial back in the, uh, back in the 80s because it was far too military in English. But in French, it's really quite normal, uh, and uh, uh, and so you know, and now we can use it. So we're using territorial far more than, than spatial because spatial still has another dimension, you know. Um, and well, yeah, one other thing, uh, a challenge at the international level is that uh, there are lots and lots of international. Um, 
uh, planning organizations. Uh, um, Frank mentioned that I was Secretary General of the International Federation of Housing and Planning, which started at the Garden Cities Movement, and then there's ISOCARP, and then there was EROF, and then there was INTA, and then there was the Commonwealth Association of Planners. I mean, for, for a year or so, I, was, I, I chaired the so-called uh, Habitats Professional Forum. In other words, it was a, it was a group of, uh, of professionals from different areas. You know, there was one international uh, association of architects. There was another international federation of uh, landscape architects. There was one of this and one of that. And there were about five or six representatives of the planning profession around the table. And, uh, and that was for me uh, the reason why I sort of tried to uh, uh, found or try and set up one international uh, association of planners and uh, I won't go into why but I failed uh, and so it's uh, it, 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 it's still a goal and I think it's something we should think about because uh, and I think yeah, yeah, yeah. Could have done. Could have done. So that you know that that that's that. It, it, it's quite a challenge. Um, second challenge, as far as I'm concerned, is that you know society has become incredibly complex, incredibly dynamic. Uh, uh, urban complexity. You know, it's uh, we're addressing totally inter interrelated issues and opportunities, and we have to find that balance between recognizing complexity on the one hand and being simple enough to make effective policies on the other. And the other thing is, you know, we're, we're dealing with stakeholders who are far more ver ver vociferous, far more educated, far more active, far more opinionated, and a problem of our time, not just informed, but also misinformed. Um, and we have many, many stakeholders, as we know, and we've got the challenge of new technologies as well. So planners have to be multi-skilled. I mean, I just noted down a few. Uh, we have to be a designer, a social enticer, a negotiator, a contractor, a collaboration supervisor, a process manager. They're all terms which have been associated with uh, the profession of, of planning, you know, and my reaction then is, is help, you know. We have to be a jack of all trades and still a master of some and but it's not just the complexity it's it's the rapidity of change that we have to deal with i mean uh in my planning career uh what i did in a day there and 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 how things changed really quite slowly and i'm talking about the 80s uh, and uh, it, it slowly got faster in the in the 90s uh, but you know in in the netherlands we had to really streamline our decision making processes in the in the 90s because change was going on far more rapidly but you know that's nothing compared with today and uh, but you still need even though we streamline the decision making processes if you could uh, uh, we still have to make really quite fundamental choices for the longer term. And a little example, uh, the Betuwe Lane. For people that don't know it, it's the, it's the rail from the, uh, from the port of Rotterdam to the Ruhrgebiet in, in Germany. I mean, roads were getting blocked up with, uh, with, uh, with, with lorries and trucks, and, uh, and so we had to do it. There were, there were loads of studies on, on the beta of a lane, really. And one of them was predicting there would be hardly any traffic at all, and the others were predicted it would be full within uh, two years of being completed. Uh, it's pretty full. Um, so, you know, those studies were right. But there were a lot of, um, let's say, lobby groups that were, oh, I'll do my own study and, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and I'll come to this conclusion, you know, before... Uh, so the, uh, what do you say it in English, the annam, is there? so the basis of the study were, were, were sorry? Presuppositions. Yeah, presuppositions. So, the, 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 you know, so I'm not saying that's misinformation, but it, it's, it's, it's guiding results. But my, the point I want to make is that that fundamental strategic decision had to be taken. And sometimes you have to cut through the knot, as you say in Dutch, and, uh, and, and either you do it or you don't do it. And, uh, and this is one example of we did it, and thank God we did, because otherwise Rotterdam would be totally ch 
So, but another example of not doing it is is the new London Airport in the in the in the seventies in the east. Now they're stuck with uh, with with Heathrow and, and Gatwick, and you know that that is really quite ridiculous. So, you know. The point I want to make, with the rapidity of change, you still have to make your fundamental decisions and, and, and you know, I'm going to do it uh, or I'm not going to do it. And, uh, and you can only do that on the basis of as well-informed uh, uh, information as you, as you can. And the other thing about the change, it's not just rapid, it's unpredictable as well. Um, I mean, Nobody predicted the smartphone, nobody predicted Uber or Airbnb or, or Amazon, um, who now hopes that Walmart will, uh, will disappear. Um, and some, there's no stopping that change. I mean, everybody knows the story of Spotify and Metallica. They tried to say, no, we're not going to do it. Sorry, Metallica, it happened, you know. Uh, and CDs would disappear uh, very, very shortly. Um, we don't know about the migration flows, you know. Uh, uh, nobody predicted uh, wretched Brexit. Um, uh, but also, there, there are other changes. Suddenly, we, in, in Holland, we've got the e-bike, uh, the electric bike. And, uh, you know, it got a bit of a reputation. Only old people go on an e-bike. But now, for example, my daughter, who is not old, uh, but she, she works 20 kilometers away from where she lives. And uh, just a bit too far on an ordinary bike, you know, with Dutch winds. And, uh, but on the, she's bought an e-bike. And it, it, it's quicker by e-bike, without sweating, uh, than going in the car and, and, the, and in the jams, you know? And it, it worked, and that is really growing. The e-bike is absolutely growing, and not just people like me. Um, next one, uh, Gautier, but it means this unpredictable change that we, as planners, we have to look at new methodologies. Um, and one little example of a, of, of, a, of a sort of new methodology is what we call the, the spontaneous city cities. It, it's, it's really only for smaller areas, and especially areas where you're, you're renovating, you know? And, um, and it's very much a sort of balance between uh, organic and, and, and planned. Basically, if you have an area that has to be, uh, has to be renovated or, or, or transformed, you, you identify that, and then you say, well, okay, let's, let's, let's have some open outcomes. Let's, uh, let's sort of supervise this open development strategies. Let's bring in the residents, the businesses, the associations. The, uh, in other words, it, it's, it's very much user orientated uh, and it, it's, it's smaller scale and there's a limited number of big, big actors in the spontaneous city uh, 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 approach. But you do have to have collective values. You can have different stakeholders, but those stakeholders have to have the collective values for those uh, uh, for those areas. I mean, I, 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 as I said, I, I, it's a bit of a superficial chat, and there's a few reflections, but I think it's www.spontaneouscity.com. <laughs> Look it up, uh, Google it. Um, so planners have to be streamlined. They have to be strategic. They have to be flexible. They have to be open-ended, but they have to be creative, and they 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 can't just follow. They have to. They have to be innovators as well. Third challenge is what I call the, the short-term, long-term dilemma. Um, the mentality today really is, is incredibly short-term. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you, you see it in companies, you know, with this uh, Republican neo-capitalism, as, as I call it, you know, um, shareholders, investors, they want a quick buck, you know, let's, let's invest and because in four years time I, I want my profit, you know, um, instead of the longer term uh, employment functions and things like that. But what's more important for planning is that often the political process is that you have a mayor and the mayor says, ah, you know, I want to score within four years before I'm, I'm elected again. Uh, because I want to show that I, I want to be re-elected. So, uh, and, and those short -term, that short-term approach is not always the, the best solution because planning is essentially a long-term investment. And so, you know, you've got rapidity and unpredictability. You've got the... Uh, and what, what you need really is a, is a, is a hierarchy of, uh, of policy goals. 
And I, I got the example of, uh, of the Strukturphysie uh, 2040 uh, uh, of the Amsterdam metropolitan region. And just to give a little example of what I mean by this, you know, you can have some, some long-term uh, uh, values, uh, and you have basically two. You know, you can, you can have collective values, so everybody wants an attractive city, so your, 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 your long-term goal is an attractive city. Nobody wants an ugly city, so everybody agrees with this very vague goal, but it is a basis for, for the... Um, and then, you know, you can zoom in and you can say, okay, everybody really agrees with more intensive land use because, you know, there's not much land around and uh, certainly not in Amsterdam. And, uh, or we have a more integrated regional transport, uh, public transport, or we invest in public spaces. And so there are a number of collective values that you can home into without, whilst you know that if the government, if the local government changes, that, you know, and there's another color to the, to the, next, uh, to the next government, that they'll carry on with those collective values. Because, and that's, that's, that's the important thing. And the other category is basically that people recognize things which are absolutely certain. So in the Structure uh, uh, uh Amsterdam Metropolitan Real, uh, uh, climate change, is agreed by left, right, everybody. Uh, because, you know, in the Netherlands, we are scared <laughs> of climate change. So, you know, and when you go down to the next level of goals, you know, you've got a space for water and you've got the post-fossil energy and, uh, and things like this. But on the other hand, you have to be flexible for things which are unpredictable. So you have to say, okay, we need at the moment, you know, there, there's, a, there's a growth of population, but will it stay at that rate? So we can identify some, some housing locations, but you have to be flexible enough maybe not to fill them up or maybe to have to, you know, find, find other ones because the population growth is, is higher. Or, you know, will car sharing take off? We don't know. Uh, it's, it's, it's uncertain. And there are political uncertainties as well. I mean, uh, some people want the Olympic Games in Amsterdam. Other people don't. Um, uh, but, you know, so it's very important that you have this hierarchy of, uh, 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 of goals and that you fill them in. So longer term stable policies, I think that's important. And to be honest, you know, in those countries with political polarization, such as the US and Britain now, it's, it's, it's terrible, it really is. So, um, I just want to stand still at, uh, at the fundamental characteristics of planning. Um, we've already seen uh, that uh, planning is multi-sectoral, it's uh, ingr uh, integrative, <laughs> can't pronounce it. It's, it's, it's longer term strategic uh, orientation, it has to be dynamic, but it has to be careful and it has to be strategic. And it has to be flexible, but nonetheless, you need some sort of degree of, of, of legal certainty. Um, but what I've identified there, are what I call the five C's, um, cooperation, collaboration, and in more political form, uh, coalition, coordination, consultation, compromise. That is planning. And I get the feeling that the world is losing these skills. <coughs> and uh, again, polarization, uh, the uh, hashtag uh, me first, uh, I want to impose what, what, what I think. Um, and I think that the, the fundamental characteristics of planning are becoming more and more important in this, uh, in this world. Um, and so what I want to briefly do uh, uh, for the rest of this, uh, this fireside chat without a fire and without chatting um, is just have a look at these five major global challenges. Um, so globalization and uh, excessive inequality, um, mobility, international mobility and, and migration, the, the dilemma between neo-nationalism and multilateralism, the crisis of democracy and sustainability. I'll, I'll, I, uh, I'll, I'll go through them as, as fast as possible. I'm just going to 
as I said, reflective, not sort of go into, but just have a few thoughts which I'll, which I'll share with you. Um, and basically, we, we, we know the problem. To start at the bottom of the, of the stair, maybe it's, it's good to, to do the next one because it, it's not climbing up the stairs, even though I find sustainability just about the most important. But, you know, it, 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 it's more this. Uh, there, there are sort of five of these um, global problems with, with, with planning in the middle. That's, that's what I just want to, to, to slowly chat about. But we know the problem. Uh, there, there's a power to, to global finance. Uh, international mega corporations are probably more important than, or more powerful than governments. Um, and certainly in Europe, uh, but elsewhere as well, national and city governments, they fall over backwards uh, to attract big companies, you know, uh, with low taxes and, and primary locations. And, uh, you know, it's a problem within, within the EU. Uh, Ireland, Luxembourg, Netherlands, um, you know, we, we sort of play around with taxes. There's a competition to sort of attract these. Uh, and, you know, and we all know that, uh, that Amazon and Starbucks and, uh, and, uh, and Apple, they're not paying the, the taxes as we, uh, as we need to. In other words, the mega corporations are the, are the, are the bosses. And uh, my son-in-law works for Amazon. Sorry about that. Um, but, I mean, there's a big debate now in, in the States about the second headquarters for, for, for Amazon. Sorry, what? Queens. Queens? Yeah. Uh, yeah. In New York? Queens. Yeah, no, they split it in two. Queens and some other Seattle. Seattle. Seattle, yeah. Oh, they're already in Seattle, but... Yeah, but they split it But, I mean, the competition for that second headquarter, and I read just a couple of weeks ago that the knock-on effect of having Amazon's second uh, would, would give employment to about, at the end of the road, uh, of about 200,000 people. No wonder there's competition for them, you know, but it, it shows the power of, uh, of, of globalization. But where does this leave planning? You know, it, first of all, it, it weakens public finances on which good planning depends. Um, uh, there's also the point of, uh, uh, of the privatization of territory, whereas public spaces are really Im important. And there's a, you need balance for, for the society to, uh, to function. Cities, and therefore planners, are in the front line of, uh, of the impact of inequality on, on, on communities. I mean, I, I just read, just before I came here, I think, 82 million people in the EU, 82 million people in the EU, EU can't afford their housing. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a... And, uh, and, and these sorts of things planners are, are, are faced with. But we zoom on. Uh, hang on, oh, I've changed it, haven't I? Uh, mobility and migration. Uh, international mobility. We all know how mobility is, you know, mobility is freedom, and freedom is incredibly important to the human spirit. We, we can't do anything about it. And we all know that that is shown in the, in the car, in Curacao, but I'm talking about international mobility. But, you know, since the 70s, uh, since the jumbo jet, the ordinary man can fly all over the world. It, it's, uh, and now, of course, we've got what I call the cheapies. Uh, so I don't dare say it, but Ryanair, you know, easy jet. Uh, but now you have Wizz Air and God knows how many. But, uh, but you know, it, it really has changed tourism, the global economy. And, uh, and there are certain positive things of, uh, you know, there's, there's lower mortality in developing countries, there's, there's better knowledge, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but also everybody knows the negative side of, uh, of uh, migration. But what I want to say is that the debate is especially on, on, on the, the ethics and the procedures, but not really on the practical problems. And, you know, I'm not criticizing that, I'm just saying the debate is on the ethics, but the impact on planning, you know, Immigration is, is unpredictable, you know, uh, and it's rapid. You know, in the Netherlands, we've had the Syrian refugees, but that, that's at the same time as an economic upturn. So there's also quite a lot of people from, uh, uh, from uh, Eastern Europe that are, that are coming because we can't fill up the jobs because there's, a, there's an economic boom. But it takes, you know, five years to plan new housing locations and, uh, and to plan new schools. There's a, there's a big tension there. Um, and then, of course, you've got the, the social cohesion and the social segregation. Uh, you can't force people to live together 
uh, you know, without uh, without a community that that creates problems. So that is a big challenge. And recently, you know, Schiphol is is reaching the the limits of its growth. So uh, and and Eindhoven Airport is is now the the airport of the south. But it's not enough. So we have to develop Lelystad, you know, to, to, to take all the cheapies to, uh, to Lelystad. And then people in the east don't want this because of the land, etc, etc. These are big planning issues which have a lot to do with the, with the mobility in, uh, and migration. And basically the planners are in the, are in the front line, but they can't really do much about the, uh, um, the, uh, uh, the sources of, uh, uh, of, of that mobility and, uh, and migration. Neo-nationalism and, uh, and multilateralism. Um, uh, we all know in, in, in terms of, you, you have two approaches. You can look at it from the point of view of people uh, and you know, that feeling of helplessness. Uh, we want to go back to our safe little territory and we don't like, uh, we're, you know, and so we, we, we want to come back to our neo-nationalism. This, this is our country again. And in terms of power, you know, the power, the people with power want to go back to their own uh, territory as well. It's the, both of these things have come together in, in Brexit, for example. And, um, but you see it, you know, it, 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 and, it, and the other side of it is, is this rejection of multilateral organizations. Um, so the EU is not particularly popular and, uh, and Trump has said, I want to get out of the, the, the UN. Uh, and the almighty nation state that has got a bit weaker recently is sort of fighting back and sovereignty is back on the agenda again. And what can international organizations do to, 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 to counterbalance this, this neo-nationalism? Um, as far as planning is concerned, I don't have to say it, I just have to mention it because you recognize it, but the, the UN has got the new urban agenda, it's got the SDGs, you know, they're not... So, uh, they're not goals that you can actually achieve, but there's, the Dutch word is, is much better, streefdoelen. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a goal that you're not going to achieve, but it's a goal you want to pursue. Um, and at the EU level, we have the territorial agenda, which is going to be revised. We have an urban agenda as well. You know, I, I, I'm not going to go into them in... In, in detail, but uh, you know, are they just idealism? I, I don't think so. Um, then they're, they're non-obligatory, but I think you have to realise. I think well, we'll, we'll jump the uh, the thing, uh, Gautier. Um, but a couple of things: they're the product of a long process involving those five C's that I that I talked about. Uh, they steer processes in the in the right direction. They have a lot of supporters cities, regions, professionals, and the influence is under the surface. There's a lot going on. There are conferences, there are meetings, there are social media, and, uh, and you know, you use them as well as, uh, as an inspiration. So, you know, there, there's absolutely an added value of, uh, of this work that the uh, multilateral organizations are doing. And my last point is, imagine that, you know, the UN and the EU weren't there and that, that they didn't do this work. It would be absolute chaos. It, the, 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 you know, it's, it, it's impossible. There is no real alternative. So don't underestimate how important the multilateral organization, and I don't agree with Trump at all. They will not go away. They will not become weaker. They're just in a dip and, uh, and they'll come back. Crisis of democracy. Um, can you go on too? <laughs> well, 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 skip the link. Uh, well, yeah, well, sorry, yeah, you know this is saying, yeah, you know that as well, I've, you know, uh -huh. skip the, yeah, skip it, no, 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 skip it. Oh, yeah, crisis of democracy. Uh, isn't this a wonderful, uh, um, you know, it, it's funny when, when people think of democracy, they, they automatically think of, of government, you know, uh, but actually there are five areas of power. There's government, there's finance, there's economy. There's the judiciary and there's the media, and uh, and we know that present global trends sort of point to a weakening of uh, of democracy. I, I don't have to uh, to go into it, but the neo-nationalists in a you know I'm not going to talk about. 
Putin or the Middle East or, or anything, but the neo-nationalists in, in, uh, in democracies, you know, they, they are trying to manipulate, especially the media. In Poland, in Hungary, they're manipulating the judiciary as well. And the Republicans are wonderful in, uh, in, uh, in changing the voting rights and changing the borders of, uh, of constituencies and things like this. So there's a sort of manipulation to try and, uh, uh, to try and stay, th stay there. And, and the role of the media in, in the rise of populism and, 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 and Brexit, you know, uh, <laughs> fake news, yeah. Okay, I, I, I mean, let, you know, you know what it's about, so I, I, I'm, I'm not going to go into it. And uh, we all know the, you know, the shortcomings of representative democracy. But I think the Brexit vote uh, has shown the shortcomings of direct democracy as well, with a referendum, when people are misformed and manipulated like they were. You know, and when you get, I'm sorry, I'm being a bit cuss, uh, but uh, but you know, when you get the governor of Florida say, sort of telling his, all his civil servants that they're not allowed to use the word climate change because I don't believe in it. It's scary. Um, but where is planning in this crisis of democracy? Um, uh, as I've said, the planning is essentially the seas. Uh, and planning starts with the, with the omgeving. I mean, we, we like our locality, we like our spaces, we like our places. And maybe the crisis of planning is linked to the crisis of democracy. I, I don't know. I'm just putting the, the stelling, you know. It's, uh, um, and as I said, democratic processes are, are inherent to good, good planning. And public participation, you know, way back in the 80s, we used to have uh, all these horse eating, uh, and we uh, used to have sort of oh, six weeks to look, at this, uh, to look at this plan and put in your objections. Nobody really did. It didn't really, really work. And I think what we have to do with this unpredictable and, and, uh, and rapidly changing society, you know, we, 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 and with our streamlined decision making, we have to get back to the, you know, having the ordinary man uh, being heard a bit. Um, and civil society needs a voice from bottom up, you know. So, you know, I, I talked about spontaneous city. Uh, there are lots of ideas of, of, uh, of social innovation in these city labs, uh, the co-ownership of, of neighborhood and city. And, uh, and I would, can I have the next one? I would add maybe a sixth C, which is, uh, and a seventh. You know, I'd, I'd add co-ownership and I'd, I'd add community. I think those are, those are important C's as well. Um, so we've got seven C's to, to think about now. Probably think of a few more as well. But okay, finally, finally, and then I'll stop. Uh, sustainability. Um, for me, it's the, it's the ultimate, ultimate challenge, you know. Um, what are we doing? L using up three and a half times the world's resources or something. Um, I was at the Grand Canyon uh, uh, last, last September. You know, the Earth has existed uh, four and a half billion years, and we've messed it up in about 10,000, you know. Um, uh, if you can ne have the next one. Uh, you know, we, we, we just had the, the living planet, you know, 60% uh, 60, 60 decline in mammals, 20% uh, uh, reduction of the Amazon rainforest. I mean, we all know it. Um, and if you can show the next one. You know, for example, in, in just at the Netherlands, uh, in the Netherlands, you know, we're, we're, we're adapting to that thing. That, that, that left-hand map is, uh, we've designated areas for wind turbine parks. Uh, uh, here, the, the other one is, is room for the river. After 400 years, at last, we're giving land back to the water and not taking it away. You know, it, it, it's quite radical, radical changes. And um, if you have the next one. I mean, you, you've probably all heard of Kate uh, Rayworth's uh, donut uh, economy. I, I, I won't go into it, but if you, I'm just saying, if you look at this, planning is at the heart of it, you know? Planning is at the heart of it. Um, uh, you know, the, the, between human rights and, and, the, and the planetary f frontiers. Again, I'll just refer to it, you can always look it up. But I want to end, actually, on a bit of a provocative note. If you can take the next one, uh, Gautier. Um, I, I see 
a big trilemma at the, at the global level. Um, this is the po these are the, the population graphs. Uh, we all know that the population, the global population, is going through the roof. But it's, if you could have the next one, it's something that even Kate Rayworth, you know, she looks at the dilemma between environments and, and economic growth, but she doesn't say much about population growth. And I think there, there's, a, there's a, a trilemma here, not just a dilemma, uh, between better sustainable environments, economic growth and poverty eradication, and explosive population growth. It's an illusion to think you can have all three. It really is an illusion to think you can have all three. And, uh, and I, I was in Brussels uh, a month or so ago. At a, it, was a, it was a conference of, uh, of um, the intention of the EU to increase overseas development budget by, by 30%. Is that when Brexit fails, or is it when Brexit uh, uh, goes ahead? I, I, I don't know. But Bill Gates was there, because Bill Gates was, uh, he was putting his money more, uh, uh, he was putting it into, into health, but now he, he's, uh, he's putting it more into the environment. And, uh, and he was the only one that, that really suggested, hey, uh, and the way he said it was the following, he said, you know, 40% of poverty in, in a certain year, not very far from now, is going to be in the, in the Congo and in Nigeria. Now, they're the two countries with the highest population growth. There is absolutely a link between explosive population growth and, 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 and poverty. And, uh, and basically, we can choose two of those. And, uh, and, and therefore, you know, I know it's incredibly difficult, but the, in that conference there was uh, a lady ambassador of, of Uganda and she said, you, you know what we do with our money? Uh, we give it to the women. We give it to the women and in the villages, uh, etc., it is effective and one of the uh, naven effects, uh, one of the side effects of, of this is that, you know, the birth rate, goes, there aren't very many women. I shouldn't say this as a man, should I? Um, but there aren't very many women in the world that want 10 kids, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's as simple as that. But I think, I'm, I think it should go on the agenda. It's a very, very delicate issue, but it should go on the agenda. And uh, anyway, um, I can round off. Shall I quickly round off? I, I'm not going to repeat what I've said, but uh, planning may be in existential difficulties and there are problems of definition, problems of clarity, um, uh, not being heard uh, in the adaption to the needs of the 21st century, but I think territorial development and land use manager are absolutely essential. And, um, and I think society needs to rebuild in the face of globalization, excessive inequality and polarization, reintroduce the power of the seven C's maybe, um, reintroduce a, a, a sense of community building and, and democratic involvement. People love their surroundings, they, they really do. They're, 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 there's a potential there to be involved in their surroundings because we are a territorial animal. And, um, and I think that the main characteristics of planning are needed uh, more than ever before. So the, that, if there's one message, it's, it's that that I want to bring. So uh, thank you for listening. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>